Pitch and Paul talking balls. So welcome to all. I'm going to open the uh, stream on my phone before Paul shouts at me, and I'm going to turn the the volume down because every week I make the same mistake and he gets really annoyed and rightfully so. You don't listen to me anyway, Bill. <laughs> I don't, mate. I'll be honest. A bit less of this and a bit more of this. Um, so yeah, I think we're good. Yes, we are. Right, we're good. So this week we are joined by um, a very good and long-standing friend of mine, but that doesn't mean to say he's getting let off the hook. Uh, Matthew Stanforth. Uh, Matthew is well known to me, Liam and Paul. Um, he is the programme manager at Table Tennis England, uh, which basically means he's a very important person. And he wears a suit with the national championships and looks all handsome and official and important. No. So we're going to go into what he does tonight. Uh, we've got some things that we want to discuss with Matt. Uh, and we've also been getting some information from what other people have been uh, posting this week as well. So <clears throat> a bit of a... Pitch and Paul talking balls tradition. Uh, me and Liam and Paul have normally asked each other questions, but because you're new to the show, Matthew, we thought you'd extend your very warm welcome. Thanks. And we'd all ask you questions, but it's just going to be me asking them. But Pitch and Paul <laughs> have sent their Wait. questions to me as well. Yeah. Okay. So but, you're, you're, you're talking about the views of the group to me. Yeah, yeah. They're, only, they're, only, they're only gentle questions, Matthew. <laughs> but you must answer them. Like, We're just getting started. This is just a quick fire round. Matthew? <laughs> You must answer the questions honestly, is that clear? Right, okay. Am, am I going to still have a job and a relationship by the end of these questions? <laughs> Probably not. Okay, I'll put a little more rest down, that's fine, thank you. Okay, Matthew, we'll start, we'll start with a gentle one. Harrogate or Middlesbrough? <laughs> oh, I'm borough through and through. Even though yes, I do Matthew! Play, I am borough through and through. Good Your start. night has just got significantly easier. Thank At you. least you can move back home if it all goes wrong. <laughs> I can't forget my roots. I cannot forget my roots. <laughs> England or Portugal? England, for sure. And I don't mind saying that very loudly so my Portuguese fiancé can hear it as well. England. Matthews out <laughs> in the big bed. <laughs> Anna Silva or pieces Basically. of silver? Oh, I've got to say Anna Silva, for sure. He's lying, boys. He's <laughs> having this pig with his money. Okay. <laughs> Steve Bailey or Paul Drinkall? Oh, oh. Now, I Matthew, I advise extreme caution in the way you answer this. That's like, that's like if I had two children, you're asking me to pick one between the other. You uh, well, I got Matthew. asked that last week, Matty. Paul was <laughs> yeah. asked. And I answered. Oh. Oh, ah. Uh. <laughs> I'd, I'd have to go Bailey. I've known him longer. He's oh. the, he, was, he was the first person. Look at Bailey's face. Look at it. Uh, oh. ba because <laughs> Bailey was the first person I had a hit with when I walked through the doors at Ormsby that very first time. So, the, yeah, there's, there's a... The yeah, truth, I, I, the yeah. we've, had, we've had some... I suppose you've had a lot of dance-off with Bailey. I was going to say, we've had some dance. We've, we've had some moments we? as well, Paul, yeah. We've had some moments. Uh, but, but, yeah. To be honest, Paul, Bailey, was, but Bailey just, just pips it. He said this story <laughs> about the, the first hit. We, we were each of his first kiss. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, Matthew, are you ready? I'm ready, yeah. David Macbeth or Bad Breath? <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got to go with David, David Macbeth, for sure. I would hope so, Matthew. <laughs> Sam I... Walker or a packet of walkers? Mm. Well, I do like the walkers, but I'd have to I like the walkers. <laughs> I like oh, walkers. Bailey. Walkers are good, but you know, it'd have to be a Sam Walker. You're going for Sam Walker, yeah? If it, if it was Johnny Walker, it might be a different story. Yeah, that, yeah. that'd change things. So. <laughs> yeah. I think that's controversial, Matthew. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Tom Jarvis or Doctor Who's TARDIS? <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. Well, it's not, Matthew. One travels through space and time. Uh, the other one doesn't. Um, <laughs> ooh, the other one's got a really good backhand. You choose. <laughs> I'm always going to pick the players, so I'm always going to pick Tom Jarvis, even though there's a lot of things you could do if you can control space and time. <laughs> that's, that's correct, Matthew. I think that's a fact. <laughs> okay, Matthew. Mills or thrills? <laughs> thrills. I'm always going to go for the thrills in life. Absolutely, Matthew. <laughs> Cookie or nookie? <laughs> you, it's got to be the nookie. Got to be the nookie. Matthew, I can't even believe that he stopped and paused for thought there. 
It's not that I was. I was just trying to sort of digest the question. I was just asked live on, live on social media. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have this every week, Matty. We have this every week. The, the final one, Matthew. You'll be delighted to know. <laughs> Paul Drinkhall or Liam Pitchford? <laughs> I like how you it's an easy one, it, isn't? sit back and just watch it just watching you sweat is already the highlight of my evening <laughs> that is not <sighs> answer the question please Matthew don't worry it won't hurt me feelings. you're horrible <laughs> I would have to say Paul because I've known I've known Paul since he was. Okay, you can't you can't leave me hanging twice. So thanks. I know. You know what I mean, <laughs> no, no, no offense, pitch, but none taken. No I worries. On a bleak test with Paul. I'm used to it. I was 16. He was about nine, and like level 40 on a bleak test. And he's still there. Like, who is this little person? <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, yeah. And then, I mean, I can always claim the one thing I can claim is I I've, I've beaten every person on this call. Which is a great achievement. Oh, Are we talking at table tennis, Matthew? Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've beaten everyone on this call at table tennis. Okay, everyone was well, very young when it happened, but I, I have done. <laughs> Matthew, I don't ever remember losing you. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Stephen. Indeniable. <laughs> I remember it, but I'm sure I did. Probably is irrelevant, but I, I, you know, I beat him when he was ten. Do you know? I think it's incredible, Matthew. But you never actually played for England. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, someone's been talking to Craig Bryant. Uh, <laughs> okay, guys, so um, let's have a big man. shout out for Matthew because he's been good enough to come on. Uh, he's obviously an official position and he's done very well to obtain that and uh, he's going to answer very honestly and have an open discussion. So joking aside, uh, that's really great yeah. of Matt. So the first thing we're going to do is ask Matthew what is in your glass this evening? Um, uh, yeah. I, I've gone for a traditional ale, so it's actually a, a banana bread beer. Ah, oh. strange mm -hmm. mathlete. You 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 know further pale ale. Paul, what's in your glass? <laughs> Father's Day in it, so I got a red wine. It's always a special occasion. Do you know what I mean? like that? Pitch, what have you got? I've got my cup of tea again. I, I didn't know we were all going. For, I didn't know we were all going for. Uh, Pitch had a loves few a cup of tea, and, and I've got Friday, don't I, I've so. got fresh orange juice. <laughs> Come on, Bales. It's very refreshing. I thought you'd have at least a smear off ice or a uh, you know, strawberry and lime copper bird or something. Goodness gracious, Matthew. That'd be pushing the boat out. <laughs> <clears throat> um, just, a, just a message uh, from Chris Rayner here, father of Tom Rayner. Um, and he's actually put, my wife has beaten Matthew at the Middlesbrough League tournament <laughs> handicap event. <laughs> Go on, lad. I, I can't, well, I said I'd be honest, I, I can't deny it. Thank you for that, Chris. Well done, Jackie. Just to uh, that, that um, for those who do play in the middle of the league, Stephen lost to Bruce Lowther. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Pitch, the, the guy's got world-class serves. World-class yeah. okay. serves. I don't doubt that, Dave. Yeah, I think, I I think you've obviously heard of him. Okay, yeah. so um, we asked you guys to uh, kind of put some thoughts about some topics uh, for Matthew that we would like to discuss. Me, Pitch and Paul have obviously got some things we'd like to open into the discussion as well. Um, Lots. I'm going to kind of start with this and before I put Matthew on this I want to get Pitch and Paul's opinion and then Matthew I want you to kind of uh, respond and give and give your thoughts on this because we're all coming from different kind of angles one of the biggest G uh, giving him some of, time there Bales to prepare <laughs> well, he, 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 being a bit nice there I can't throw him under, under the bus too much you know <laughs> Straight away, I'm anyway. Barrage with a load of questions. <laughs> Matthew, right. Matthew, we had a we had a passionate uh, discussion on the phone the other week oh. regarding uh, the, <laughs> keeping people in table tennis and people drifting out of the sport. It's certainly been very current and discussed on other programs or podcasts, whatever people are kind of calling these things. Um, so I'm going to ask Paul and Liam first. <laughs> Liam, I want your thoughts on this first, please, mate. Even if it's only brief with regards to how the standard is affected when people drop out of the sport, people who maybe don't get to the level that you and Paul have achieved, um, and your thoughts on that? Yeah, for me, I think, <clears throat> of course, when people drop out, then they become, you know, the gap obviously broadens. And it is, you know, if you're, say, a junior, and then you've only sort of in front of you have got, you know, you're looking at me and boys, it is quite a big gap. And then between there, where where are the stepping stones? I don't think I think there needs to be, you know, more stepping stones on the way, which can help the younger players obviously progress. Because if you're 
you know, moving out of juniors, coming into the seniors, it is very difficult to see where, how and where, you know, you're going to go to make that next step because, it, you know, it's difficult to just go out of juniors and then expect to make a senior team. Yeah. Okay, Paul, your thoughts on that, please? Uh, yeah, very similar. I think I think it be beneficial for everybody if somehow we could keep players involved longer um whatever level i think because if you yeah. if you're 200 in england or 100 in england each person you keep involved it's putting somebody else slightly lower um and it, it's it's doing that like building up the strength and depth um but i think just the knowledge in general across across the whole country like could be higher um and and then I think even if you manage if you lose lose players, for instance, if you've still got the the coaches in local clubs and things that are still involved, then that can back up the for the loss of the players. Ideally, obviously, you keep everybody as much as you can involved. But I think, um, yeah, I think I think it's very difficult to do that. Obviously, financially, unless you're you're a top player, it's very difficult to make a living. And then. Um, again, ideally, yeah, people will, will stay on to play and, you know, even alongside studying or working, somehow try and stay in the game. But again, we know that's very difficult. So I think trying to build up a, a bigger thing uh, sort of across the, the whole system um, and the knowledge across the whole system is probably a, a longer term fix. OK, so Paul, there you've referenced strength and depth, which obviously... We've discussed on previous programmes about how that's a problem and how guys are going to get to the level of yourself and Liam um, and a little bit of a drop-off in standard after the first kind of four or five. Just to add to that, Matthew, before you um, give us your thoughts, I would say as well that it's not even just at that kind of top level. Um, I maybe look at guys today who are around 20 or 30 who 10 or 15 years ago would have maybe been 100 or 120, 130 possibly. It's hard to say across the years, but there is a huge drop-out. Now, of course, people get the 17 or 18, you're not going to keep everybody. People go and do different things, and that's fine. But I think table tennis does have a, a very poor record of keeping these guys. And for me, there's, there doesn't seem to be anything to keep players playing who, who don't then get to the standard to take to that level that Paul and Liam are at. So with all that that we've said, my kind of question to you on that would be, how aware are table tennis England of this? Because obviously they should be. And yep. secondly, what is in place to try and address that? Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it, we are aware of it. It's, um, I mean, for for me personally, over the last couple of years, I've been focused on sort of a younger part of the pathway because of how how the England junior squad evolved. So, and I saw there was a gap there, so that that for me was a priority. So, focused on that. But as the as the guys have said, you know, that step from a junior to a senior is massive. It's absolutely yeah. huge. So. There's a couple of things that we try to put in place to help with that. So, um, build the partnership we've got at the University of Nottingham. One is part of, part of that is obviously to have a venue, a central venue we can use. But the other bit is actually for those who maybe aren't ready to take that step abroad, because I know you guys have sort of spoke about that, and sometimes players aren't ready that 16, 17, 18 years old of making that step. Um, we have a there's there's we have a, a lot of work that we do there that, that can support players. Plus, such as, such as, well, the, we work in we, we work in quite close partnership with the university, so we'll support some of their sessions we have done for the last few years. So, and where, where is it? If, if there's a player who maybe isn't at the university, we think actually we need to support them. We'll speak to the university about them coming in because obviously the university have got a um, a priority of, of you know their their university teams and things like that. We're trying to add value to their sessions, but also support those other players by trying to get them in there as well, which the university have been really good at doing. Um, as well as you've got, obviously, some people who actually want to follow the academia bit and have that security, because with sport, there's no, there's no guarantees or anything. So actually getting that you know, A-levels and then degree in place is something that's important for the players. So actually supporting that where you've got the table, t- table tennis program where they, I think you know, the university have about 18 to 20 hours of practice they can access a week plus you've got the academia bit which would be in a good university that can support what what they're calling in, in some some uh, circles as dual career so you're following the academia and the playing okay Matthew uh, so let's say that um, let's say that I'm a plumber apprentice and I'm 18 and I live yeah. in Wales what do I do 
Uh, well, you've got the Welsh squad because you're in Wales. <laughs> okay, 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 that's fine. So, Matty, so, I'd let's come say out. I'm a, so let's say I'm a plumber, an apprentice, and I live in Kent. Right. Well, for, for is us, is there anything in place at table tennis England aware of these guys? Because that's what I was going to say. Is there? Is there even in the future or near or distant future? Is there sort of something on the cards to say have another? You know, university or college or whatever it is sort of around and, and build on it like that or is it all sort of at the minute Nottingham well, and then at the moment it's just been Nottingham because that's where the, the hub of our activity is yeah. um, but the, the sort of the next sort of steps we want to take is developing that kind of under 21 side of things so um, especially now you know you've got the European under 21 championship so even the international federation you know putting under 21 categories in, in, in the Opens you, the Institute now doing a European under 21 championships. Obviously, it's 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 not just a problem in England; it's a problem across all all European countries for a, for a big dropout. So actually, attra- even where you've got you know countries where they've Having got run, so. league, <laughs> countries where you've got, uh, <laughs> got a feedback. professional league and things, there is still a high higher level of dropout. So having that under 21s uh, championship is what uh, is it, again is another incentive to try and keep keep that industry is- more involved. Is that sort of the, the age then that it tends that the most dropouts happen after the juniors going into seniors, or is it like do we know do we know them figures? Um, I, I I don't know the exact figures. That's that's no. just my experience because yeah. you've also got some some players who you know they, they sign actually I've gone as far as I want to go with tilt and so I want to pursue other things. Yeah. That, that will happen. Um, I don't think you're going to change that. I think the other thing that we 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 need to do is also also make them aware of other opportunities in the sport than they may access. So not every player is going to make it to where, to where you guys are. Uh, but obviously, we want to keep them involved in some way, shape or form. So some, some in terms of the playing, but also to look at other routes. Some may want to go into coaching. Some may want to go into sports development. Some may want to go into the administration side of sport and things. Everyone has different mm-hmm. kind of wants and needs. And so I think what we need to do is now sort of uh, start exploring what these different exit routes and opportunities are that people can access. So, you know, like myself, I mean, I, I, you know, I wanted to be a good player, but I started too late. But, you know, now, then I went into coaching and now it's become my career. So, you know, the sport has given me something different to what it's given you guys, but it's something that I'm really passionate about and love. So, but that, I, I kind of stumbled upon that. And I was, I was fortunate. I had, a, you know, I, you know, Carol Moore helped support me with, with that when I yeah. first started. And then, then I've gone from there really. So I think there's other opportunities, but yeah, we need to be better at what the, explaining what those opportunities are. Like I say, we're trying to we're trying to look. Our next steps are to look at something around that under twenty one sort of side of things to try and keep players in, in there longer and support them in that mm-hmm. sort of step from from junior to senior. But do you see in the future? That, Matthew? Okay. Sorry, firing out. Oh, okay. Who <laughs> is who is going to do that? What? The, who's going to look at it? We, we, to be fair, everything we look at collectively as a team. It's not. It's not just sort of one person's job. We we we, we as as a, as a team, we look at everything. So um, even with, even the stuff that we've done at the younger parts of the pathway with hopes and aspire that we now have, that was sort of you know discussions. As a, we, you know, we we talk regularly about you know what needs to improve, where do we need to go. That then became a sort of a focal point for us, and us as a team sort of did that. Now we're looking now now we need to start looking at that next next side where it comes to under twenty ones. Now you're just starting to look at that at the minute. Is that so? There's nothing really in place at that already or at the minute. We've been looking at kind of uh, building what we call international hotspots. So we've got, we've got the stuff for the university, that's one, the players who are staying domestically. But then we're looking at, at building what we call an international hotspot. So if a player is ready to go abroad, it's clubs that okay. we've been in a relationship with to try and help support that, trend, that next step. Yeah. That step abroad is massive, as you guys know, um, okay. to keep that connection and everything as well. Yeah. So, you know, with a few of the players over the last couple of years that have come through the squads and that we've we support, we then help get them placed in, in clubs where we, we try to keep, keep in contact and keep a relationship with to see how they're getting on. How many, how many juniors are abroad at the moment? Are there any? I know I, uh, I, saw, a pod, I saw a show the other day where <coughs> the ping pong show when they were speaking to, I know a couple of them are living abroad. Are yeah. they being like, supported fully? I mean, because they've made a, a big choice to go abroad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are they... They're getting the right support, are they? Uh, not every player that's gone abroad is supported by us. And the reason for that is because we're supporting the players who come through our system. 
so so there's some there's some players who want to do it a different way and that's absolutely fine so a big change we made with the training squads is is we've separated selection for events and championships from selection for training squads and that was a really that was a very tactical decision that we made because we, what we found is there were some players who were coming to the camps who were only coming there really to because they needed to do that to get picked for England and actually mm. they, they didn't they didn't want to work with us so we, we, we what ended up happening is you cr- created sort of difficult relationships where we're trying to help the players but the players actually don't, don't uh, more or less want to do something different and so we're which is very very challenging I think actually okay because if you if you're a player and you want to play for your country in a sport like table tennis yes it's an individual sport but it's also a team sport and I yeah. think for a player to say I don't want to work with you is quite exceptional really I guess well, I guess they didn't really say that but they, no, they, they picked up on behaviors that they weren't yeah. necessarily taking things on board as well, much as and, and, and this isn't just a sort of an immediate just you know right okay you know we've asked you to do this and then right that's it this is over a, like a long period of time yeah. where and, 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 and you know you, you'll get some players that sometimes actually behavior is a problem you'll get or, or something mm. else is an issue and stuff which you know so I'm not gonna, never I've never gone any specifics on here but there's some, well, there's it's some, quite simple. If a player's being like that, then they get dropped. Well, yeah, exactly, exactly. That'd be my so, view. But if, yeah. if, um, if, yeah, if, yeah, if, if I kind wants, of agree with that. If a player wants to do it a different way, though, we're not going to hold. You know, that that's that's kind of their decision, and we're not going to say, well, you have to be with us if you're going to get picked for there. If you want to do it a different way, that's fine. The, yeah, then, that's fine. That's fine. But but surely also. As a squad and as a team, you go to the Europeans or the World Championships or anything. Look, you've yeah. got Pitch and Paul here, who remember it, along with Sam, yeah. who got a bronze medal. And I honestly believe that their team spirit was a massive factor in that. Yeah, it was. Yeah, mass, huge. So, so you can. That's, Paul that's Pitch, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what Paul thinks, but for me, you know, that, that at that tournament, obviously, we went with three players. Um, I'm not sure, you know, if we'd have gone with four or five at that time, if we would have got that bronze medal. Yeah, so I then, totally agree. So I think, how, I think. How, how challenging would that be if, if you said to a player, you can do everything your own way? Where does that line get drawn? Because that's not if the it, team if spirit. It, if it comes to, but if it, comes to, if it comes to preparation for a championship, so if we look at sort of the yeah. world championships, and, and they are selected to be as part of that team, they will then be in all the pre-championship training and everything like right. that. This, okay. is just, this is just simply the training squad programs that we have. So, yeah, it's, it's the day in, day out training. They, yes. If they don't choose to to buy into the table tennis England way, they can do it their own way. And if they're getting the yeah. results, they'll get called up and that's then once they're there. I yeah. think that's the thing. I think, I think that's very good that's that enough, people yeah. need, need to take responsibility themselves. I think ideally everybody wants as much support as they can and any support is obviously welcome normally from, from everybody. Hmm. But I think sometimes now people look to, you know, what's not happening and stuff a lot easier and a lot quicker than what can I do? And, you know, it's it's a difficult thing to get over, but the problem is, you waste a year thinking of what should be happening and things, yeah. and it's already, and again, it's not easy because you you a lot, everybody feels they deserve this and they deserve that and they've worked hard for this and it's it is right and yeah. ideally in an ideal world, Table Tennis England and everybody are in a position to help with as much as possible, um, but at the end of the day, I, I think each person. Like, like now we, we represent England and obviously every time we play, we represent England, whether we're playing for a club or not, we're still, people know we represent England, we represent Great Britain, we're still <laughs> representing, but more often than not now, and I think probably more so in the future with the new um, World Table Tennis and things like that, I think we're going to be more as individuals. So I think, obviously we need to look at ourselves like that, but at the same time, hopefully Table Tennis England with that, get a bit more freedom to sort out all these pathways and different things that can then start benefiting everybody. Yeah. Okay, Paul, on that subject, um, I think that was, Liam, that was a great question about juniors being abroad. Matthew's obviously said that, you know, there are some being supported, some want yeah. to do it the wrong way, which is fine. Just, just quick, just a quick, sorry, yep. can I put in a little yep. bit? A Liverpool oh, yeah. one nil up or something? <laughs> no, it's half time, mate. Uh, right. if that, if that's why I'm distracted and not, not talking with <laughs> Liverpool or I'm sorry. Bad timing. <laughs> Um, just go. So you know, obviously not everybody can play the the major tournaments, but from what I understand, 
even if you do, you know, obviously you fund it yourself, but you can, there's still an opportunity to play the open, you know, sort of lower as, mm. you know, say the, you know, five to 10, we'll say senior men still have that opportunity if they want to, to, yeah, yeah. they can go and pay for themselves to play open. So there is still an opportunity. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, not, yeah. A, lot, a lot of people think that if you don't get selected, you can't play. But I think what you're saying, pitching in many ways is if people put themselves forward and yeah. are willing to fund it, and yeah. working hard and, and they're at the level, then they can go to a tournament and yeah, well, give, give yeah. themselves and put yeah. themselves out there. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, as it currently stands in, in the ITF events, you've got, you got Challenger, Challenger Plus and then World Tour. And yeah. then with the new World Tail Tennis, it'll be, I think it's just a more extensive sort of system, but it's tiered. So, yeah, mm. so there's, there'll be a sort of a level of tournaments that you guys enter and then there'll be a level of tournaments for sort of those those lower level players who yeah. maybe just coming in the yeah. sort of senior ranks can, can access. So just yeah. on that subject then, it ties in nicely to what we've all been saying really, Matthew, what you said about there, this kind of idea of a, of a pathway. You know, Liam mentioned it at the start about stepping stones and, you know, how clear is it for people to get to the top? Paul's obviously referenced this. A comment from uh, Edward John Lynn, um, yeah. who I don't know, I can only assume he's a coach. He said he's got right. an 18, yeah. venue, eight, 18 table venue in Birmingham. Yeah. Um, get said, up there. Not, Nottingham is great, uh, but how long does that take to, to create the buzz? And his key point here is that I'm sure there are others around. Move a few big guns around and it will inspire thousands. I definitely have a concern about just this University of Nottingham. University of Nottingham. For me, it's just not good enough. It's great, it, it, it's great to have that, but you can't put everything through there. I think he raises a very valid point. Well, the, I mean, there's, there's a couple of things there. I mean, the, the, one of the reasons why we use the University of Nottingham is because when... when when that was that was built sort of four or five years ago and we had some investment that we that from the, the facilities we could put in and in return for that we got x amount of access okay. so a big thing that we managed to reduce was the overhead in terms of venue costs which is probably one of the biggest costs when it comes to running training camps yeah so as well as then you've got other bits that you can tap into uh you've got accommodation and stuff that which you know yeah. if we're using student halls that's a lot cheaper than using hotels and that's becoming an issue now because hotels are now getting strict on there being someone over the age of 16 in every room. So we're having new challenges with that that we have to start, start overcoming stuff. So from that respect, it was that, that was the reason why we started using the University of Nottingham. Um, and they're, they're actually wanting to build a partnership with us to go even further than that as well. So that's why we're using that as a, as a sort of a hub. But then also, if, if we got one day we were able to create a national centre, so I know, I know Paul, you've, you've mentioned about national centre a lot over the last oh, couple of Oh, Matthew. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but, That's letting the cat out of the bag. Yeah. But if you had a national centre... Did you be... say we're creating a national centre, mate? Sorry. Is that what you said? <laughs> if we're trying to develop a national centre... <laughs> oh, national... Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's always going to be... His mobile phone is flashing right now. <laughs> <laughs> But it's always, that's always going to be in one place. So yeah. So, so th th there's that, and then also from experience, we did. You know, we, we had a few years where we were moving camps around a different place and everything. And actually, from a from a operations point of view, and from managing the players, it was it ended up being really. really it caused a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. You suddenly have players from the south. If you move the camps to the north, why not traveling there? And then vice versa, the other way around. So then you have to deal with all that. You have to deal with various sort of venue costs, and obviously then the overhead has come up and and things like that. So he's trying to find somewhere central that has the facility that we need, is able, but also we're trying to keep the overheads as low as possible because it... I, so I really struggle with the notion of, um, okay, so there's obviously some guys out there who may not be in as financially a strong position as others. I really struggle with the attitude of you get invited on an England training camp as a junior or a young player saying, I don't want to travel northward. What does that say about that person's attitude? True. Sorry, but yeah. it's just. Oh, I, 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 I agree, but it, like you said, it's it's sometimes it's attitude. Sometimes there's a lot of things behind it, aren't there? But yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I know, accept again, that, but it, it, it's it, it's not as it's not as easy it's always forward, as yeah. this, that, and the other. But yeah, I know you mean you, you know as long as they're doing their absolute best to get there. But again, you know, this is again parents come into this a lot, and you know we're lucky enough to have parents that support and stuff but you know if you don't and you have to travel all that way and stuff it, it can become very difficult um there's um there's Matty, on that question sorry just sorry but what um 
He wants this national the, centre. Hannah, yeah, no, 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 I'm not jumping back on that yet. We've got a bit of time, haven't we? Uh, <laughs> we'll save that chestnut for later. <laughs> um, like, obviously, there's not. There obviously are a lot of table tennis clubs nationally, but there's there's not necessarily that many that have full time access and things to halls. But there are a few in around the country in different parts of the country. Would they not be willing to? somehow make a partnership or something so that you know them overheads again can be like a lot minimized. cheaper because minimized because yeah. you, you you can use and access their club they're maybe getting their club players to, to train with i spoke bailey spoke about this a lot you're probably going to bring it up but i thought but you know their players can then maybe whilst the training camp is that week they're in you know in birmingham at that club they get six players to come in um it's depending on what level and they can work with the coaches or the players and different things. And The players and again, can I think stay with local families, maybe? Yeah, I think it's it's very, you know, like, I, I can't remember the guy's name, but now he's saying about moving it around and stuff. But the, the Edward, issue is... Edward, John Lynn. Edward, Edward, there we go. Yeah. We, we need, you know, I, I think it's a lot of people are very easy and eager to say, for instance, Taylor Tennis England aren't doing this. But then, okay, so how can you, how can you help with that? So, okay, we can host a camp, for example. And if everybody came in together as a table tennis community, if you like, I think in a positive way, I think things, because everybody seems to come together in table tennis as a community when it's negative. Hmm. But very rarely do people come together when it's positive. And yeah, I think that, that time, could Paul, be a huge that, though, difference. I think at the same time on that, Matt, you know, before we come to you, Paul, you make a good point. And there is definitely, Thanks, sadly, people. I think a lot of people who, you know, will bash table tennis England no matter what they do, which is not constructive. It's not going to achieve anything. Um, and it's not what kind of we're about. But at the same time, I would also say that why hasn't somebody from table tennis England contacted these clubs and said something as basic as, can we hold a camp? If so... Yeah, but um, that's what I'm saying. Like, but, is, well, can you know, that not happen? But, but, it, it, I mean, just just chip in. One, we have done that. And there's been, there's been some really good examples where, kind of like what you said there, I mean, uh, Paul, uh, you know, we did some camps down in Plymouth and they, they were fantastic. You know, the, the guys there, Paul Whiting, Kev Bedell, uh, and all... all yeah, the, I went down there a couple of times. But, but, we, we were there. Fantastic. But then, the, uh, you know, we, there was... <laughs> Liverpool are back on, so... Yeah, sorry, <laughs> And, and they, they did so much to accommodate us and make it work. You know, the you know, volunteers are doing all the food and everything to keep all the costs down. It's fantastic. But then managing all the logistics and everything, when we are a small team, because we mm. we're not, in our team, there's sort of, there's myself, there's, there's Alan and there's Marcus. That's, that's the performance team. So all the administration and everything that, that has to go with all of that is all, 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 on, our, all on our shoulders as is well. Is Gav not in that now then? Or is that not? Well, sorry, yeah, Gav, Gav as well, yeah. So all, all the organisation, administration, everything, all comes onto the sort of the coaches to do. So when we're moving it around, it actually creates a lot of work. And so in one sense to, and as well as you've got all the other sort of administration around. <laughs> Sorry, then, ba Bailey's like, face. He's got know, a good, know, know. good thing to come so, up on here. So, you know, for... for you, can, I, can I say, so before you kick off, Bale, sorry. Um, <laughs> is, it, is it the case that sometimes things are a bit, over uh what's the word <laughs> long day sorry um sort of over is that red wine paul so so i oh, know it's kicking in um like sometimes i know now there's a lot of things like you said like you need a 16 year old in each and every room and things but yeah. certainly when it comes to sort of older than that if you, if you had a say for instance under 21 would would it is it sometimes the fact that you know there's there's maybe a simple way to doing it, but it's not hundred percent perfect? So then it's always it's kind of seeked out to try and get the perfect route, or is it just the fact that it is very difficult to to just get the 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 bare minimum of what could happen? Um, I think it's, it's it's more sort of a, a capacity issue. So you know, you know, we're, we're, we you know, there's only a limit on on what, on what we can do at, at a certain point. So one thing we want, don't want to do is sort of start something and not be able to do it properly. So, so, you know, we, we, you know I, I could turn around tomorrow and say, right, we're going to do another 21 camp. But then there's going to be a chunk of work to do with that to make, to make that work and to make it sort of to the players and everything and buy in. That's w without any sort of finance or anything. But actually, make that so it's, it's, it's a value to the players to help them. There's, there's a lot of work that needs to go into that. So we don't want to start something we can't, 
that we're, you know, we, we can't do properly. I think now, because we've got this other part of the pathways in place, we're now in a place where we can start do, doing these, these other parts of work. Um, so that's why I'm saying about the under 21s, we can start developing that further now because we now got, now we've got that running and, and going. We've got more people involved to do that. We can, we can start looking at, at these other points. Okay, so yeah. that's fine. Um, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't like that, did you? But I often, yeah. I often describe you, Matthew, as a as a very close friend of mine, as a very nice guy doing a very difficult job, mm. and I stand by that. However, um, if if we honestly think that three guys that were paid full time to work in table tennis with all the staff at the EPTA that there's no time to organise training camps. Tail Tennis tennis. England, what year are you living in? Tail Tennis England, whatever. If we honestly think that that is not achievable, there's a problem. But but this should be happening. This should be happening. It it might not be your fault, it might not be your job role, your responsibility, but Tail Tennis people know this stuff should be taking place. And the sport is suffering as a result. But you're saying that we're not organising tail tennis camps, but we are. We're, no, we're, we're, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm saying that if there's not enough staff and enough people to organise these additional things that Paul suggested, that I would agree with, that we would all agree, I think, is a good thing, Matthew. You kind of said that yourself. Yeah. Then there's a problem. This should already be taking place. It would seem to be a large oversight. Is, can, is there a question? Because like when you were explaining it earlier, Matty, yeah. it, it, like, I, I don't know... I don't know enough about it and it's probably very hard because both sides probably think, but it, is, it a, is it a lack of commitment sometimes from the players? Because like when you said there about we have to put a camp on, but we have to make it, um, basically you almost have to make it so clear to the players that it's worthwhile doing. Whereas it, it wants, when, I think yeah. when, when I was playing, if England said there's a camp on, there was a camp on. When Which, by the way, Matthew, I would then say that that is not your fault at all, and that is indefensible attitude by these players. Well, it's, it, and, and, and it's and it's not it's not every player, but then they're, they're going to. So when you've got sort of players in that under twenty one bracket, and and say some of the you know some of them are living abroad and things, and we're asking them to pay for a flight to come back for a training camp, they need to feel that is going to be a benefit to them. They need to feel yeah, but hang on a minute. Yeah, hang on a minute. Hang on. You've got four or five players who live abroad. What about the rest? Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just using them as an example. I'm just. I'm, yeah. So yeah, the one, the ones domestically, the players domestically, yeah, for sure. That's that's going to be easier. But where where you're asking some of the players who you know you want to be having that sort of training camp that are, are living abroad at the moment. You're asking them to make quite a big financial commitment when they've only made a big financial commitment. Okay, okay, yeah. so let's take them out of the equation. They're yeah. gone. They're gone. Right. right? So anybody who's living and playing abroad, I commend them. They're taking care of themselves. They've made a big commitment to the sport. Liam talked about this a few weeks ago. He went over when he was 16 years old. He, he went and did it. Hmm. You know, so I fully commend these guys. They've done it. Paul's done it. Sam's done it. Tom Jarvis has done it great. But what about these guys, like we've discussed, who aren't at that level, what is there for them? This is an ideal solution to keep people in the sport. It's not taking place. Yeah, and that, that's why I was saying before, that's the step that we're now going to start looking at, that we was, we, we're beginning to look at. So, <clears throat> Matthew, I like it. <laughs> When's the first camp? <laughs> <laughs> because I think that my friend Edward John Lynn is ready to step up to the plate. Ed's, He's doing, Ed's doing a great job in Birmingham. He's doing a really doing a great job. job in Birmingham. So there's one. Get, get them local families on the floor. You, ta- did he, you can did stay he say with 18 them. tables? 18 he tables? 18. He's, he's, he's built a complete academy system there in Birmingham. Wow. More people he's done, he's done yeah, there's there. one place for the England under-21 well, training done. camp. Fair if anybody yeah. else is watching and wants to comment to volunteer their clubs and services, Matthew's basically <laughs> said he's promised he's going to do it. So comment <laughs> away. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. Thanks, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> just just one thing um, this is okay I don't want to use a specific example because I don't think it's fair to the player that's been mentioned okay but I think this is an important point that I've heard people discussing so I am going to ask you Matt alright okay, yeah yeah and that is some, a guy called Vidal Graham who I don't know I understand he's the head coach at Grantham yeah um, has referenced a time when there was a junior who was in England number two 
in this case, uh, a, a female player who supposedly didn't get picked for England because she played abroad. Yet Liam did the same playing abroad, but he did get picked. Now, again, I don't know any background on this. Right. I know it's been something that's come up a lot. Can you give us any thoughts on that? Can you give us any? <clears throat> well, I mean, so I, is, is that about getting picked for, a, for an event or for a It, it for would a seem so, yeah. Is that Liam, Liam as in me? Liam as in you. I mean, the, so I mean, the, the thing LP. <laughs> I just, I'm just known as Pitch most of the time. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, Don't call me Liam. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was listening to me mum then. <laughs> <laughs> Liam, tidy your bedroom. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, the, the example he's mentioned, I, I, I don't know what the, I, I, I can't think of what the, exam, yeah. the, the event or anything is. What, what I will say, I mean, I, I think um, also uh, so, someone had mentioned on the comments for about, about the show and everything about selection policies. And stuff, so I think it's worth sort of talking about that a little bit. So I was going to bring that in, Matthew. So this is an ideal opportunity, really. So do you want to talk about that? Yeah, it's we haven't rehearsed this or anything, have we, Stephen? We'll just <laughs> it's, it's that long, <laughs> long relationship. That's why you chose him over me, apparently, Matthew. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm never so, going to forget that. Go on. The, the whole, the whole, so whole point of selection policies is to sort of outline right what we're we looking for. If you want to be considered to be selected, what are we looking for? Because uh, and is this juniors, cadets, seniors? This is this is everything from our entry level training squad all the way up to getting for, for Olympics. As a good friend of ours would have said, Matthew, the whole shooting match. The whole shooting match. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Um, so the, the whole point of that is to sort of outline what we're looking for, uh, what you need to do to be eligible, um, but then, then also what standard the standards that we are looking for in order to be be selected. So whether it's on ranking, whether it's on results. Oh. It's you uh, up, Pitch. Sorry, my headphones went. Can you still in? Yeah, you with us, yeah, Pitch. Sorry. Don't worry. I th I sorry, my God or something. So. Yeah. Um, so, 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 so put it plain, Matthew. Put it plain. Yeah. What have you got to do to get picked? It depends on the event because the the, the, the selection policy is different for, for every event because every event it may be at different levels and it may have different requirements in order to get in. So, okay, instance, okay. Yeah. So I am I'm 14 years old. I'm ranked number three in England cadet. What have I got to do to get picked? Picked for what? Is it the uh, European Championships? Is it World the European Championships? Championships. European use. I think the, I'm going off memory, top 50 in the world. No, top 50 in Europe. So the automatic criteria, top 50 in Europe, top 250 in the um, seniors in Europe, reached the last 16 of uh, ITF events. And I think they were all listed in the selection policy and national champion. They were the four four things that we're looking at to be competing. They're definite. <laughs> They're, they're definite they're in. Called automatic. Yeah. So yeah. if you achieve those, you win. Unless. Well, you have... can still qualify if you've not achieved one of these things. Yeah, but then then you fall under the category of discretionary. So we so as an example, we may have two players. So we might have one player is in the top fifty, another player has reached the last sixteen. So we've got two players for the junior team. Mm -hmm. The junior team at, at the European Youth is three players. So <clears throat> after that, if if one of those players becomes national champion, we then got a pool here of players who've applied who then fall under the discretionary category and then that's up to the selection panel to decide which one of those players will, will go based on right can i just ask what's what's this selection panel who's on it uh, selection panel normally is <clears throat> simon mills as the chair alan cook as technical director and myself as program manager with <clears throat> other people feeding in information that we need right so so hang on a minute so if i was if i was tom jarvis I'm ranked four in England and I'm doing all the right things. Yep. And I want to go to the Worlds, for instance. Mm -hmm. Does 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 my coach, in this case Gavin Evans, does he not pick that team? <clears throat> we we've purposely not not given him a vote to try and help protect the sort of the coach athlete relationship because when it gets to the sort of fringe parts of, of selection uh, from experience. <laughs> but Gavin, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. But, but, Gav, Pitch, Gav, sorry, mate. Sorry, Pitch. Can you say that again? We lost you there. I say for me, that's part and parcel of the sport. Like, of course it is. So, like, so, so, Matthew, yeah. I didn't know this. So, so, Gavin Evans doesn't get to pick who goes to the World Championships. He doesn't even get a voice. He gets a voice. He just doesn't have a vote. And that's right. That. So, hang on a minute. So, so, I'm just going to make a point here because I think that a lot of people are 
they're going to be thinking the same thing as me. And I'm seeing some of the comments coming through. Okay. And I have to say that I agree, right? Simon Mills, who I know a little bit, must be a bright guy to, to get to where he's got in, in sports and stuff. And I know he's been a skier. How can he have a vote, but Gavin Evans doesn't? He's the chair of the panel. Simon so, Mills doesn't, doesn't know table tennis the same way as Gavin Evans, does he? With all due respect to Simon. No, he, no, he doesn't. Yeah, but so how that, come he has a vote? He's he does not. Does he if have I'm a vote? Coach, I, I want an input to what players I'm going to take. I'm the one working with them. I'm supposedly the expert. I'm paid for my expertise. But that's like saying that Ed Woodward would pick the team for Manchester United, but Oli Gunnar wouldn't. But yeah, I mean, like I say, Gavin will be there feeding in with 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 his opinions and everything and, and, and stuff like that. So we're not. It's not that Gavin is part of that conversation. Absolutely. But what what we well, doesn't get a vote. He, he doesn't get a vote at the moment. I think that's incredible. Yeah. No, I think that's, I I think that's, that's incredible. incredible. Matthew, I know it's not your rule, but I mean, I just think. I what? think it's one of them things where I think it's been put in place to try and protect and. Like you said, the athlete coach relationship. But, but, but at the, no, but at the end of the day, I think again, if if a coach drops you and it's backed up with facts and hang on a minute, look at the A, B, and C, then if it's if it's again, most of the time, the team in many ways picks itself. And I know, like you said, the fringe players and certain positions in teams can be taken differently than that. Mm. But if you're going to if you're going as a number four or a number five. You have to be, if, if you're in that position, I think you're always at risk of getting dropped because, yeah. because they, they, they might then say, okay, youth, or you might then say something for doubles, or you might then say something for, you know, just a team play or, or a different style for the practice more often than not. But Matthew, this, can we yeah. have your undivided attention, please? Got my undivided attention. He's, he's, he's just Matthew? getting feedback, isn't he? Undivided attention, please. Uh, you've got my undivided attention, as always. Excellent. Yeah, I just think that it's trying to protect that, but at the end of the day, it, it is very it, difficult it when you get to a tournament. It shouldn't need protecting. Because, protect him. Uh, because if, you get, if you get to a tournament and, and the team don't do well... Matthew? Like, it's, 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 it's the team, it's the team, and then it's the coach that, yeah. that then get the stick, that, yeah. that are on there, that are on the front, front line, if you like. Whereas they've... Obviously, the players are always should be held accountable, and the coach to some extent as well. But as in this situation, if the coach is turned up to a team, turned up with a team that, like, there's not. I know they have input, but it's it's then them that are that have failed. It's not on. It. It's it's just not on, is it? Let Let's be honest, lads. I'm sorry. But Gavin yeah. doesn't get a vote, but he's the coach. I'm not saying. I'm not. You know. I'm not saying you. I'm not taking anything away from the other. I'm not saying you shouldn't have a vote. But Gav, Gav sees us day in, day out. He knows us. He goes to tournaments with us. I don't... You might... You know, I, we've not been in the training all together. Um, I'm seeing, you know, Simon's not generally in, in the training all. And neither is Cookie working with me, personally. So I, I think Gav should be on that having a vote. Or whoever's the coach, you know, he was previous coaches as well. So. I, I, I can't believe he doesn't. I can't believe he doesn't. It, it How doesn't can a matter. guy who is basically <laughs> an admin guy, as, as great a job as I'm sure Simon Mills does in his own particular role, as important? How can he have a vote over the? Coach? I think Simon Simon doesn't have a vote, does he? Unless it's it, it, unless, oh, no, he unless it's the, he's, he's he's the chair. So but it can't be a split, can it? Because there's only three votes. Well, if, 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 say, if, if one person what? votes one way and one person, so we've got two players and one votes for one and one votes for the other, has okay, to be yeah, to go got you. in order to make a decision. So then Simon yeah. actually makes the final decision? As the chair. The, the, the chair, normally in any sort of voting situation, would normally make a casting decision if, it, if there was a split. Is it, is it just me who thinks this is a bit bizarre? I think Gal should have a vote. That's my... Yeah. Well, whoever's the coach should have a vote, personally. It, it doesn't. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Matthew, this is this is not for you. Yeah, it's 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 in there. That's my point. Gas is in there. You know. And that's what but it's not point. even. We have him in there for, because because we, we know he's in there we, we, day in day out. So that's that's why we need his input and everything. Yeah, but, you know, and he sees who's in good form, who's not in good form. He knows how you know. And, and yeah, so, current current so, form. Yeah, is current a, form. Yeah. I, th I think of what we you know go on a lot of past results when, you know, someone maybe not in good form. 
someone is and then yeah, I don't know. I just think yeah, the coach should have a vote. It does see I mean Matthew, this this isn't for you to defend our champion. I wouldn't ask you to yeah. do such a thing, but it, it doesn't seem to me right that um a guy who doesn't come from the sport and look, I could be wrong, Simon Mills could turn around and say, actually, Bills, I know a damn sight more about tables tennis than you. I've studied it intensely for six years. You're talking out your backside, but I don't think you would. But it seems insane. I, I think to me. Simon's Simon's coming at it from the point of where his job role is. I think that's what he's 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 protecting. Not yeah, just but, protecting. He thinks yeah, it's the he, right way to to deal with the team but, and no, stuff. But, it, but it, I think from I our point of view, we think but, not. But but well, how would he get a vote over the head coach who was an expert in table tennis? But I have to also say this is a strategic decision by the team. I mean, he's he, you know he was head of performance, now director of sport. This is a collective decision by 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 the team. So, but with all the selection policies, we continually review them. So, if we well, feel that one we, needs <laughs> we, we need to change them, we we we're always looking at them. So, so it's it's kind of and obviously over the last sort of year, it just year, doesn't the, really make sense to me. It doesn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you've made what? that quite clear. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm, totally, I'm totally scratching my head and, you know, I just don't, um, I can't, I, I, I cannot how, see the sense in that. How, obviously, Matt, you, you coached the youth before, didn't you? How did you, like, how would you feel sort of having a, a field of players out in front of you that maybe two of them out of four you, you didn't really think should, should be there or didn't, didn't deserve, to, or you, you, there was two more that looked like you, you wanted them in there because you thought they're in much better shape. They're going to help this team at this moment in time to do what we need to do. And then there's two that have just been selected on, you know, they, they were maybe, because quite often, let's be honest, there's, you know, there's a few players that it could be here or there. Yeah. So at, at one moment you might say, oh, this tournament's definitely, definitely go with C for instance. And then, the next tournament, you might think, you know what, D's in a bit slightly better um, physical and mental way and they're playing well. So, you know, let's go with them now and like really back it and stuff. How would you have felt as a coach? Well, bear in mind, Matthew, that you spent your life in table tennis. You're a table yeah, tennis yeah. expert. You're the coach. Yeah, I mean, I know exactly what Paul's saying, but that's, that's making it sound like, um, you know, that sort of we're going in a completely different direction to say what, what the coaches want to do. And that's that's not the case. It's still it's a really active collective conversation. Yeah. So so yes, the, the, there's the, there's the part of the vote, and we, we did that specifically to try and protect the coach athlete relationship. That was that was the purpose of that. But there's 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 never been an instance that I'm aware of where the coach is coming in, sort of you know we you know we're all around the table, we're talking about players, and then we've gone for a completely different player to what the coach is saying, and then there's then there's friction. We've never ever done that. It's been more as a way. So we can all continually check and challenge ourselves. So if, it, if it, and, and to make sure that there's 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 kind of no bias or anything in any, in any way, shape or form. They okay, it's I like that. But, made, but I don't get. I don't really. I, I do like that, but I don't really I like get that. it. What? Why is the coach going to be biased when they're the ones that put no, the no, job on the line? It, 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 they're it's, not going to pick a player just not, because they're a mate. It's not and, that there will be bias. It's it's to it's to make sure that the, the we could we we. We're covering everything so we can't be accused of any bias in any way. It's all based yeah. on where the players are. Are they doing the things to sort of be where I think they that, to, get, to get picked? Because that's, that's really... That's, that's great. That's, Matthew, I, I, think think, yeah. I think all that is, is great. But, you know, I mean, I still think that it's a bit silly that the coach doesn't have a vote. And it's undermining the coach as well. It's, it, it, it wasn't there to undermine the coach at all. I can well imagine it wasn't, but it is. <laughs> I'm sure nobody sat down and said, "Let's undermine the coach." I'm saying about that, but I, I get what you you know you're trying to protect the coach. I don't, you know, I think the the coach goes into the job role knowing that you know they're going to have to make tough decisions and tough selections. Not you know, yeah. I think and uh, they, yeah, go on, pitch. No, just just that really. I think I don't think the yeah. coach is protecting. I think, but it's, it's if, because if you if you yeah, not, I think you've got to take it. You can't take it personal. Yeah. No, no, no. That, yeah. It's, it's, Come on then, Matthew. We've had, we, you know, there's been, there's been times when obviously you, you pick things and obviously there's, there's people who are disappointed by the decisions and everything, and that's caused a lot of problems. So, so the coach can focus on the players who've been picked to get prepared for an event and everything. 
we kept that separate. They can put, so say we pick, you know, put four men or anything, coach focus on them. If there's any sort of backlash or anything or, or anything on who's querying decision, we will deal with that and, and keep them away from that. So they can focus on a job of how do I get this team or individuals ready for the championship they're about to Which is into. great. Matthew, yeah. do you know what? I think that's great. The point about bias is great. But all this doesn't apply to the fact that the coach should still have a vote. If then the player doesn't like that coach's vote, and you as the backroom team want to manage that, I fully commend you. I think that's superb. But the coach should have a big hand in picking that team. And you've said it's a good discussion and the coach is involved, which is great. But I am uncomfortable with the fact that somebody who doesn't have a non sorry, somebody who doesn't have a tail times background has the casting vote on that. I think that's I think that's what's in odd. that's that I think I mean I don't know if it's a, a simple solution because nothing's ever simple. But at the end of the day, nobody knows whose vote goes where from the player's point of view. So it's not like if you put the coach onto that selection panel, the players are going to know exactly where the coach's vote went, but at least the coach has had some sort of input. And also, in, Paul, do you know what? On that, that input, that, on that, 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 that is a huge input. Okay, great. Thanks, okay. Matt, for that. So, Ross Brown has just made a very good comment on this. Paul and Liam, you could um, maybe advise us on this. Are any other countries Thanks. using... Yeah. Using the same model? Not that I know of. Um, I think, I think, I think France, France and Germany quite often have a very, a very similar way in that they have, if you're top fifty in the world or top, they have a ranking thing that you get in. A criteria. Um, I think, I think it might even be the top two for, in the world. It doesn't matter where you are. If you're top two in the yes. world, you get in. Um, top two from your country in the world. Um, you get in and then quite often if it's a four-man team I think the third person is selected by a tournament yeah um, so they'll have again they've got they've got more strength and depth so they'll have four or five players come yes. and they play around Robin and yeah. to select one one place and then the final place generally is a wild card and they pick somebody I, from a selection panel that I, I think fits that's where they go from. Yeah, I agree. I don't see that as a, as a bad thing, really. I think that can only encourage more people staying in the sport and more people yeah, exactly. you know, feeling they've got a chance of playing for yeah. England. You know, if, you, if you put a tournament, a qualification tournament on a you know, month before the, the tournament and then you know, then you know who's in form. Yeah. And that's, that's why we've done, you know, so, so like with the European New Championships, it was the last 16 in ITTF events. So you might have had a good start of the season and performed really well in some ITTF events there and, had a, you know, and got to the last 16. So, so the, there's sort of that bit. But there's also the bit recognising the national champion. So that, that, is, that is the pinnacle sort of youth event nationally. So, you know, if you, if you haven't met the other three bits, then you go out and you deliver at the national championships, then you're in that team. You've, you, you've earned yeah. it. So, so it, it, yeah, it, it's it, or, or or just before the sort of the, the deadline that we've said, you might have had a real good performance at an ITCF event, or your ranking might have suddenly spiked because you've been consistent over a number of events. So there's a few, there's a number of different ways that the players can sort of make it in one sense, depending on obviously what what the criteria. Mm -hmm. but why I think seniors as well. Like, so, like why not? Have, right? have qualification tournaments like they do in France and Germany for seniors. Well, and China, yeah. China do it. China. I think it's slight, slightly different for for me on that side. Like I think it, I think in some ways it's very good, and like you said, it give every it does give everybody a chance. But at the same time, we do know that you, you sometimes get people that know each other that you get slightly different results, and then you go abroad, and then people aren't quite as good abroad. And I don't think we're quite yet. We haven't got the quite strength in depth, so you, you know, if, if if number eight, and to be fair, I suppose, yeah, if Paul, they've still, it, they've though, it. still yeah. though, that's 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 still more information for those coaches to make an informed choice. It doesn't have to yeah, be concrete, you, no, but, but if generally, if you win them tournaments, you go. But I think at the end of the day, actually, if you do win that tournament, you, you've earned and you've won that tournament, so in a way, fair play, and I think, and then you obviously are somewhere near that level. The last bit on that as well is that if you, if you say going to a, you know, we're using European use as an example, the players that are going to be playing out are, are not players in England. They're going to be playing players out in, you know, from Sweden, France, Germany, Poland, blah, 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 blah. So actually, can you prove that you can beat, because these are the players you're going to be competing against. Have you got a yeah. track record? 
against the, against those players. Yeah, all these all these factors have got to be considered. You yeah. can't just say it's results in in this country. You can't just say it's national champion. You have to have a whole um, selection criteria as you guys have got all yeah, yeah. In, in this place. I just really question the validity of the of the coach not having a vote. And I'm sorry, but the whole thing of trying to protect him it doesn't cut it for me. It's just no. I think the coach. Off. I think the coach would. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure he wants that. Yeah, I think the co- any coach of any, whether it's senior men, whether it's junior boys, junior girls, cadets or whatever, I'm, I might be totally wrong and maybe some of the coaches have sat back and said, no, I don't want to vote. But if they don't, then again, you know, should they be in the job? I think you've got to take responsibility yeah. in that way and say, I, I want at least to have a vote. And I know there's a lot of input, but I think as far as I'm aware, the coaches would want to have a vote. I know they have input. I mean, yeah. Who knows? It's all backroom stuff. But I'm I think sure. I think that should be sixty or seventy percent coming from the coach. One thing, sorry, I forgot. I think the German the German national team. I'm not sure if it's for the Olympics or for something, but I think they actually created. And it might be interesting, Matt, for you guys to ask them about it. I don't know exactly how it was, but they created a system where if you got to a certain round of a certain yeah, tournament, you got certain. And you got. I think Germany did it as well. So they've both got it. You, you get a certain amount of points yeah, and yeah. then you, you're gathering up points. And then they did the tournament as well. And yeah. during the tournament, each win was a certain amount of points. Yeah. So that it was sort of the tournament. If you won it, it didn't mean you were in, but it, it helped you. And then you had to get different. You had to play internationally to get the different points from different tournaments and things. And I think, I think that's quite a good balance as well. Cause you are getting then the international stuff plus, mm. plus a tournament. And, um, but again, calendars, there's always, there's yeah, always I mean, things, isn't there? I mean, the, the thing with all the, po- the policies is they're, they're, all, they're, they're always evolving. So, you know, the, the difference between where they are now to where when I first started are completely different because we, yeah. we, we keep looking at them. We're not, we're not saying they're perfect. We never, we, we never say anything's perfect. We're always trying to make things better and more refined. So, so Yeah, and that's what, I mean, everything I've said, it's not to, to have a go or anything. No, 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 no because people, people want to about, see progress. Yeah, People want yeah. to see improvement and progress, and I just my my um my big mate Edward John Lynn has just made another <laughs> cracking comment. Um, he's just said on a positive note, Matt has put his neck on the line. How many from TTT would do that? From TTE, sorry, tell them. <laughs> so I think that's massively to your credit, actually, Matthew, because we've not gone easy on you there. Um, I think he's got a new pair of glasses that he wants to show off or something. <laughs> <I think. laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, to, to, to kind of come on and defend or whatever we want to say with that, I think is... Um, it's not, I think it's, is not, very it's good. not to defend, it's more... It, I, I want to come on so I can sort of explain where, where we are. And I, I'm, not, I, I'm not saying everything we do is perfect at all. Um, I'm just well, trying no one, to... No one, one is, are they? A lot of the stuff that we, what, what, what we're trying to do, what we're trying to work towards, because, you know, you know, we, we we are incredibly passionate about table tennis. We want England to be successful. Yeah. So um, and like I say, we, we we're, we're always learning. We're always evolving. So for me, listening to all these different podcasts and everything, it's been great because it's given me an insight on what people are thinking, what they're feeling. Actually, some things actually maybe that they, they don't fully understand. And so this gives you an opportunity to sort of explain it a little bit further. And and even after this, if anyone wants to contact me, I'm more than happy to sort of chat to anyone about any stuff. So I, I, Matthew, I, well, love I that. think it'll be in. Yeah, it's, what I think is that his phone will be ringing for weeks. Um, <laughs> what yeah. I think would be interesting as well is speaking to sort of different generations, Matty. Like, again, maybe it's been done, I don't know. But sort of figuring out, you know, the Nottingham National Centre, what were good, bad, could have been better or in what ways, and then the slightly older gen- And yeah. taking, again, different, obviously so many things changed between then and now, even Nottingham and now, um, and Sheffield and now. But it... There's there's so much info in players and coaches and stuff out there that that I think could create quite a good picture on on systems and not even necessarily always just going nationally going internationally to yeah. to to different generations and stuff. Well, we we're, we're conti- we I mean that is something we, we we do always do. There's still loads of stuff that we you know we need to the the loads of other information that's out there for sure. Um, and as well as that, we look at other sports as well because it's. It, I think it's important not just to look inside the sort of tail to it. Actually, we can pull some ideas from what other racket sports do or other sports do and stuff as well. So, okay, Matt. We, so we, on that subject, that, that that brings us very nicely to the next point. Um, and again, we're getting a lot of comments on this, and I think this is 
we'll kind of finish up with this like kind of 10 minutes because it's been really great but we've time's flown it's been a very healthy discussion um and that is you know Matt you're saying well we're looking at other sports we're changing this we're constantly kind of evolving I am somebody that isn't actively involved in the sport anymore except through with Paul really um I don't play I don't coach I might have a hit with a local junior if they're struggling for practice but that's it but I look on the English Table Tennis Association website, look on the IGTF website, it's kind of still my sport. And one thing that seems to be coming out is that there's a massive gap between the membership and the association. And I just wonder, I don't see, you could turn around and say, well, actually, no, you're wrong. This does happen. I don't see many communications around this and members' uh, views being taken in, into account. What I do see is questionnaires that are very limited they tend to push people into a certain view. Um, I know that people were tweeting and commenting on social media last week. I'm not saying that that's the best way to get your point across. Matthew, I give you tremendous credit for coming on tonight and listening and saying, people, please approach me. Can you now go away and say, right, these will be discussed and we will communicate this back? And how are you going to do that? Um, because I, mean, I think a lot of members are very frustrated that there's an yeah. increasing gap between the association and the members of our spot. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, I mean, the, all, all the podcasts from all, all, not just yourselves, all the other ones that are out there and everything. I'm sort of watching religiously and stuff to sort of see what what's being said, and I'm I'm sort of noting all that down. At the moment, I've just done that for my own sort of personal knowledge. Um, I'm more than happy to sort of put that together and share that with with everyone else. I know that other people in the association are also watching these as well to get a better understanding of, of, of what's out there. Um, you know. I know the association are doing loads of really good stuff, but there's a lot more we can do for sure. Um, can you be specific on that? I th sorry, can I just check, uh, <laughs> chip in quite quickly here? Um, what about something like this as well? Might be totally off the bat, but like, well, you know, like you guys discussing something on where people can somehow see it. Obviously, not everything that you discuss, but ever and all still are they? Yeah. Uh, um, but some, you know, something where obviously it's very hard to access yeah. and to stuff the stuff that is being talked about by the association. But maybe some of the stuff um, could could be shared. Maybe I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how. I that... think that there needs to be more transparency. There needs to be more transparency. Yeah. And even if there is transparency, people need to be able to access this and know who these guys are. There's a lot of people who work for the association now. Things have changed. It's got more corporate. That's fine. It's, it, it's not always a bad thing. Um, people are coming from outside the sport. That's brought some strengths, some weaknesses as well. Who are these people? Who are they? What do they do? Is there a section on the website with a job description, with a photo, with an email? We, we want to hear from you. There is a problem, Matt, in terms of the difference, the gap between the membership yeah. and the association. I think you've got some tremendous people down there. You were very passionate, and there's other guys who are passionate. But what are you doing to engage the membership? Well, I mean, for for me, for, for from what we've done over the I mean, the, lock, the lockdown period has been, whilst it's been challenging in some respects, it's also been sort of uh, it's opened our eyes to a few others. So, from a performance point of view, just come back to what Paul was saying there about you know the, the sort of the communication stuff out. You know, we've done all the coaching, all the performance coaching team, and the coaching department have done. Uh, and other departments as well have done a number of webinars and things over the okay. o over the last weeks, and they've been. You can you can tell by the the attendance on those. I mean, on Zoom you can get ninety five people, and they've you know a lot of the time they're maxed out. So there's a lot of the, right. part, partly because people have obviously had the time to get on, but actually the need to actually want want to find out more. So you know, I know from from our point of view, that's something we want to do more. So whether that's with the coaches, whether that's with the players, the parents, and everything, you know, actually. Yeah. Everyone's become more comfortable with this technology and using it and talking online. It's great, isn't it? We love meeting here every week, don't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, tap, tapping into this. And I, and I know just, you know, I mean, we, we've mainly done those on, on, on coaching specific topics and, and things like that. But actually, I have an enormous discussion about, you know, t talking about what we're doing with the pathway and things. Yeah, that, that's something we can definitely look into and stuff and, you know, and, and hopefully make happen. Because... Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. There's no cost involved. The only cost is, is people's yeah. time, and if they want to find out, then it's a great, a great tool to use and everything. Fantastic. And also, Matthew, on that note, then just seeing a lot of different opinions kind of floating about social media and different things for years now with regards to British League, Grand Prix, tournaments, national championships, all these stuff. 
A lot of people yep. seem to be, uh, to use another term about one of our favourite people, singing from the same hymn sheet. Yep. Um, and yet, one, you never see any changes. So you guys might say, we've accepted all those comments, we'll take those comments, but they're not good because of this, this, this. But they don't seem to be acknowledged. There's no discussion on them. I wouldn't say that the Grand Prix are particularly healthy. In fact, they're shocking yep. um, in terms of the numbers of people who are competing. There's obviously problems. So is there any way that you guys at Table Tennis England can actually show people that you're listening and acknowledge some of these things? I know I've sent emails to people in the past a long time ago that weren't ever replied to. Maybe I'm just not important. I'm just a pleb. But there's a lot of plebs like me who care about our sport. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, the, Did you the, just admit that, Bills, finally? A lot of pubs like me. I was being <laughs> not hypothetical. That bit. Not that. I was being hypothetical. <laughs> yeah. The, the the thing around competitions, I mean, you've got, you've got Neil Rogers, who who heads the competition part, a really, really good guy, very knowledgeable around competitions and things. And I know he's looking at a, a competition review at the moment. It's it's just in kind of the early stage of that, so it's not ready to sort of go out or anything, but that that is being looked at. Because good luck, Neil. I commend you. It's, it's, become a, it's, become a, it's become a very sort of busy calendar with lots of competition opportunities, but actually what the structure is and everything, it needs, needs a lot of work. So I know that's being looked at. I don't know the exact details of it because it's not something I've been personally involved with, but I know that is definitely happening. Right, and, so can Neil, it's, you know, Matthew, it's, Neil's probably not watching. He's probably watching Coronation Street or something. <laughs> if Neil's watching, Neil, please tell us your thoughts on this and please communicate with the membership somehow. If not, Matthew, can you go to Neil and say, Neil, I'm very important. Can you please <laughs> tell the membership the work you're doing on this because I think it's brilliant. Can it be communicated? Because it's already saying, oh, well, we're looking at this, we're looking at this. Mm. Right, so what's the result going to be? It's straight in for the members, isn't it, if they're yeah. not... If, if, yeah. And Matthew, not, you're getting yeah, so much respect yeah. on these comments for coming on, which I agree with. Well, these <laughs> are the guys need to find a way to engage with the members because they're the lifeblood of our sport. Yeah, well, I mean, the... the, the... The table for me, the table tennis community is a really special community. It's 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 you know I mean I, Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> no, but it's you can. Uh, there's not a lot of sports where you can go to an event and you can sort of someone that you may have you might have just be friends on Facebook, but you never really spoke to each other. Actually, sit down. You can have a have a conversation with them for hours about table tennis. Yeah. It's for me. That's it's a it's a really really special community. I agree. Uh, and yeah. you know, lots of knowledge out there, lots of experience out there. That you know, and I, Matthew, I, the, you, you're absolutely right. And the problem is, these guys feel alienated from the association. There's a strong feeling. That's of that. the problem. I think the discussions now, it's all, a lot of it seems to be about like what Tailton's England are doing wrong. And again, I don't, I don't always think it is something Tailton's England are doing wrong. It's I agree. Just, for instance, like Bailey said, it's t it's maybe the the miscommunication or the lack of communication. Yeah, and again, yeah. it's not always easy, you know, it's, you can't communicate everything and this, that and the other, but a little bit more access for the members, I guess, across the board. Um, again, it's hopefully would help things. people be positive, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, 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 mean I, I know from, from, from our side, like I say, webinars and something is one, one thing we want to tap into a lot more. Um, with the camps and everything we do, you know, we've always said that it's an open door to the, to the camps for coaches. So if there's any coaches out there who want to, see what we're doing and talk to us about what we're doing, the more than welcome to sort of come along and see one of our camps and we'll, we'll you know, we'll, we'll chat with them, we'll, we'll talk about what we're doing, why we're doing it, the, the way we're doing it, things like that. Again, we're not saying it's perfect, but, you know, the, the, the rationale behind why we're doing the way, things the way we're doing it, we're more than happy to have discussions with, with people about. Um, and, yeah, like, and, and, again, part of my reason coming on here is, is, is so, so I, you know, I, I can just talk about what we're doing. Like I say, yeah. it's, it's nothing... We're not saying it's perfect, but we have done a lot to, you know, I mean, the pathway has gone from 30, and the youth side has gone from 30 players to now 66. We've got the younger set now eight, up to up to 18. So it's become a lot more comprehensive. In, and, and there's, a, you know, the, it's, it's, we're starting to see some fruits of that labour because that's only been going for the last sort of two years. We're starting to see some good little yeah. players sort of popping up. It's a lot, developing players is a, a longer term process, but that that's start, starting to come out. We've got some good little players there. We've got another player who's, who's now been picked for the Euro Talent squad, so that's the best under 13s across Europe. Um, so, yeah, you know, I like that. Get up there. Go to that kid. Who's that, that person? Is, uh, that's Jacob Piwawa. Go on, Jacob. Down in Torbay. It's, it's from, yeah. Jacob Piwawa, your name is fantastic, <laughs> and I commend you for being picked for that squad, and you work hard, 
and you could be the next Paul or Liam. Could be. Matt, Matt, it was, it was, was, I'll work hard, you'll be the next me, so you want to avoid that, me old friend. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything you wanted to say, Matty? I think you've just got a bit out there, but like, is there any, or ask or anything? Because obviously, you know, you know, you're on the Pitch and Paul talking ball show, Matt, <laughs> is it? Um, no, I mean, the main thing I want to sort of pick pick your brains about really for many sort of pitch and pop. So you're, you're two young players who've, who've, who've kind of... Thank you, thank you. Been young? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Paul, not so much, especially with the receding hairline. But anyway, um, sorry, I had to mention that. Cool. But, Do you know what, Matthew? There's no, it's down here, look. Like that. It's, it's still down here, look. It's just... <laughs> Matthew, there's no, you've let yourself down. There's no I've been, personal comments. I've been, sorry, I've sorry. been nothing but nice, have I? And he's, nothing but he's nice, Paul. To be fair, Paul, you have been nothing but nice. Nothing but, Matthew, apologise at once. Right, my internet's gone, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I apologise, Paul. Anyway, <laughs> the, the, one, the one thing I want to ask you guys about, you've, you've obviously, you've, you've, you've been through it and you've both had quite different experiences in terms of your youth journey. And for me, that's, that's a, sort of a big part of what I've been involved with over the last sort of five or six years. So. You know, my, my question is, what, if, you were, if you were a young player now, or if you were talking to a young player now, what words of wisdom would you give them from the experience you have to try and help them on their journey? That, you know, some things that you wish you'd known when you were, say, 13, 14, 15, 16, whatever it was. Is there any Who's going first, Matt? Okay. Me, me. Oh, sorry, go on. Oh, well. All I would say is just go to the National Centre. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, sorry. Sorry. I'll, sorry, Matty. That was just the rec- receding hairline. Some words of wisdom, please. Well, I, <laughs> I want more to say on it, but uh, that was a joke. Go on, Paul. Is is it not finished yet? Right. No. So I, I mean, I would say what, like you, I've sort of said earlier on in this. I don't know, obviously, if everybody's been watching it, but is is look at yourself. I think it's very easy to look elsewhere and things, and it's it's very good to get help from elsewhere, but take positives from elsewhere, not the negatives. And again, it's very difficult to do that, but the more you can do that, the better person and player you will be. And I think, I think it's, it's very easy to look away and look at negatives and, you know, if this and if that, and maybe this and maybe that, but look at yourself, what you can do, what you can control. Um, And if you are looking out outwards, try and take the positives from, anything that you necessarily can't control but um you can control yourself and how you work and and what commitment and what things you put in um and just just take the positives from coaches players and things around you and and keep that positive mindset Liam yeah I think on the playing side of things I'd say sort of try and try and take you know listen to more people and try and take the the good advice from them, you know, instead of, you know, a lot of people have just one, one person. I think, you know, you need to be more open-minded and listen to, you know, some coaches might say one thing, some might be different, but you might be able to take, you know, not every coach is right. and whatever. Everyone has good and bad things um, to say. I think you need to be open-minded enough to take the good things from, from each coach that you work with. Um, and just sort of learn more about your game. Don't worry about, you know, how other people are playing and try not, you know, when you're young, try not to think too much about rankings and results. It's all about, you know, the process. Try and, try and I know it's hard. It is because everyone wants to win and, uh, and be ranked highest. But, you know, if you trust your process um, and work hard, I think, you know, into your senior game, you can, you can be up there. I don't think necessarily cadets and junior is of course they matter but you know in the whole grand scheme of things if you want to be a good senior they don't it don't matter you know too much yeah you don't have to be the best cadet in the world to be the best player in the world yes yeah. you know no, so yeah, i think absolutely yeah i think I th- totally like it says you, the aim is to be a good table tennis player in the end yeah so it, it's it's almost not a sprint it's a marathon um yeah, good point, Liam. Good point, Pitch, sorry. I like think it. on that subject, um, I think yeah. there's far too many coaches in the UK who will say, you should only listen to me. They don't know what they're talking about. Um, this is the only way to do it. It's not good. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I do I, think there is a lot of that, and I don't think it's necessarily the right approach, or in my view, it's not the right approach. 
Yeah, I had a I had a player on one of our camps that I put on, and we put on an exercise, and he just went off and wasn't doing what we'd set, and I sort of just asked a question and mentioned, just, "Oh, my my coach says I can't do that." So okay, so but, but you're here today, so let you know, let's give it a go and we'll see. But sort of took it after a while okay yeah I'll, I'll give it a go but it was it was quite hard to sort of yeah. open the mind a little bit just to to play a to play a shot and it, you know we weren't saying play play between your legs it, it was quite a conventional shot um but pitch is probably saying just play behind your back play behind your back yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do what you do what you got to do to win the point mate <laughs> <laughs> It, it's sometimes it's sometimes misinterpreted where if something's really hard to learn that it's interpreted that you can't do it. It isn't. Yeah. It's, that's something you find hard, so you've got to persevere. Yeah. yeah. And that's and that's what sometimes all mis- misunderstood. And when it's also, yeah, I think um, you become really fit. I'll just add that point as well for you know for young. I, you know, I think I, everyone did it when they were young. You know, you, you try to work on the your, your weaknesses a lot. I'd say something. You know, I when I sort of matured in my game and stuff and learned a little bit more, it was obviously about focusing on strengths as well, building your game, how you want, know how you want to play. Of course, you've got another plan B and, and so yeah. on. You need to build your game around your strengths. It's all good focusing on your weakness and you've got to do that at some parts of the season. Yeah. And, but you've also got to focus heavily on your strengths as well. Yeah. I think, as well, I think that's um, a huge... Go on, Paul, sorry, sorry. I was just going to say, I think it's a huge difference, I think, with the UK and places like Germany and France. I think across, the, just naming the European countries, some of the European countries there in Sweden, for instance, but they, like Liam says there, they really do bring out the best and the strengths in people's games and they work on them and and they sort of almost fix the weaknesses around them. But they And, and I think their self-belief and things from a young age is built up so much more because of that. And then the weaknesses are not that weak anymore because they've got the belief in, in the game anyway. Yeah, I think as well, Matthew. Paul, Paul made a very good what point. Was that Matthew? I think. Well, what we're doing with young players is we're trying to make what, what we what we phrase as is your strengths. We're making those into super strengths, and the, the yeah. areas that you find more difficult, making them into sort of strong areas of your game, so you're more solid yeah. so and pinned on that. So, but again, building that game around what is your super strength? Yeah. What is your trademark? What are you going to be known for? If you look at all the world players. If I ask you guys about, you know, right, what what are they known for? What are they known for? Yeah. Trademarks that you like straight away, you associate with them. Yeah. yeah. It's a great approach. I think Paul made a very good point there as well about how players need to look at themselves first. I've seen a lot of young guys, t- uh, Table Tennis England didn't do this for me, they didn't do that for me. It doesn't come on a plate. No. You know, yeah. it's not all bad. Table Tennis England do some some really good stuff as well. So you have to look at yourself and say, well, have I done enough? Yeah. Be forensic with yourself. Have I really pushed hard enough? It's not just, well, I didn't get support, I didn't get this. That may be the case in some cases, but you've always got to start with, Liam said the same thing, control what you can control. Yeah. You know, And you have to ask yourself the question, have I done enough, rather than just saying, table tennis England, table tennis England. You've, you've got to be honest with yourself. And Matt, I'm sure you've had that objection That's- before. Yeah, yeah. From from what I see, Matty, is it's a lot. Obviously, there's always competition internally with the players, but from what I've seen, it, it seems that that's kind of unhealthy in some ways. And it's like, well, they're getting this, they're getting. I should be, yeah. You know, this. Well, actually, the whole goal and the aim for everybody here is to improve together. And okay, you want to be competing, but you don't want to be competing at the junior nationals, which is where you're going to be competing anyway. You want to be doing that at the world championships. You want to. You you want to be. Beating each other in the final of the worlds or the the yeah. Europeans or something. So so build and, and again as I said like work together to be better together. Yeah. As players as everything across the whole board. Yeah. And Matthew, yeah. your final thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. I mean that's what that's what one thing we you know when the players are first coming in the pathway and it's about okay I want to be England number one and things like that. We but we're not looking at that. We're looking at where do you want to be here? That bigger mm. stage, look bigger. Yeah. And, and that part, part of the first sort of steps is getting them to open their eyes to that. Yeah. Um, and then getting them exposed internationally earlier on so they can actually see what it's about. Because we can talk about it all we want, but I think you have, to be, you have to go into it. You have to feel it for yourself. And that's partly to see what it's like, but also to actually demystify it a little bit. Because we you know, go back sort of four years, you've got young players like all oh, the French are really good, the Germans are really good, the Swedish are really good. Yeah, they are, but so are we. 
You're, you've yeah. got just as much ability as those guys. Yeah. You're hungry. You can do it. And so just demystifies it a little bit. They're not, they're not superhuman. They're just someone who's got some ability and a work bloody hard with it. So now you do, if you want to be good, you mm. do the same. But that, that, that's touching on what I said about the belief. I think mm. we need to work on, as a nation, being more positive and getting that self-belief from a much younger age to, yeah. to back it up when, when it's needed. Yeah, for sure. Great. So, guys, I think we need to wrap up there because we've gone... Unbelievable, Jeff, isn't it? Bit bit on the on. Unbelievable, Jeff. Um, Matthew, massive pitch thanks be, to me. Pitch has been talking too much. Um, <laughs> you've got <laughs> many comments, Matt. Oh, um, Matthew, you've got, you've got many comments uh, being said about commending you for coming on. I would certainly uh, say that, as I'm sure would Liam and Paul. I think it's tremendous. Again, um, a great guy doing a very difficult job. Um, and doing his best with it. So I fully commend you for that. Thank you. Um, big thanks That's to everybody much. who's commented, of which there's loads. Any feedback is always welcome. Um, Dan this week, sorry, I should have mentioned this at the start. Dan again was tied up this week. Um, he's sanding Michael Mays's blade down for him. Um, <laughs> so he hasn't been able to... No, he's not. He's not, he's not doing that. He's, <laughs> he's actually sanding the handle. No, no he's not. Nice. He's, um, he's tied up this week, so he couldn't make it. Uh, but hopefully he will be back next week. Matthew has agreed on camera uh, that Gavin Evans will now have sole control of selecting the teams. <laughs> and a national centre will be opening in the next year, and um, as well as an under-21 squad. And he's agreed for these to be moving around all these clubs. There's many people volunteering, so thanks for that, Matt. Yeah, um, I'm also starting my own building and joinery business now. Um, yeah. I've become self-employed. So. Well, this, this, <laughs> this, this plumber who was in the southeast of England, he can obviously help out, you know. He can have a knock while he's there and he can do the things. So, um, <laughs> big thanks to everyone who's joined us and massive thank you to Matthew for coming on and being interrogated by me and Liam and Paul. Um, and good yeah, stuff, Matthew. Will... Yes. yes, very good stuff, Matthew. Um, and we will look forward to seeing you all next Sunday. Peace yeah. out, yeah. guys. Peace out. Cheers, lads. Good Later.